Right guys, welcome back. We're back in Houdini. Uh, and just to recap where we were before we jumped into Substance Painter, we've got our low polygonal representation of our height field. That's what we've been working on in Substance Painter. All right, and this is the one that's got the uh, UV coordinates on it laid out using our UDIM tiles. All right, so this is what we, we, we want to transfer those maps those masks onto all right so this is going to be our target for our baking okay and if we go up a level I'm just going to turn off the display of that terrain low turn on our terrain high here we've got an output node that is still a series of volumes all right okay so the way that we can turn these volumes into attribute data it's quite quite straightforward. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make a bit of room in my network view. So this section here was the high polygonal version that we sent to Substance Painter for baking. We're kind of done with that now. We can leave that there. That's fine. If we ever need, if we ever make any changes, and we need to go back and rebake out our high poly, we can do that. And in fact, what we'll do was we'll just put that in a network box, and we'll say render high poly gone geo just so we, we know what that is if we ever need to come back to it okay but in order to what we want to do is twofold we want to convert this to polygons but we also want to transfer those volume masks these volumes here we want to convert those to point attributes and the height field convert will do that for us okay so the height field convert is going to do a very, very similar job to terrain segment, the, the node that we used in the previous video. And to be honest, I'm not entirely sure why it doesn't uh, include those masks. That'd be very useful if it did. Um, but anyway, so we've got this convert height field. We're going to delete this output node just temporarily because that can confuse issues if, we, if we're sending data to different places. So I'm going to delete that output and I'm going to collect, connect the output of my height field into that convert height field and just give it a few seconds to process because it will convert the volumes into into geometry so there we go we're just under four million polygons there i don't know where those four thousand three thousand nine hundred and ninety nine polygons have gone compared to our nice and neat four million over here but anyway so with this, if we middle click on it now or bring up the information panel, what you can see is we're now working with polygons, but also we've got these point attributes here. Okay, so if we click on them, we can we can see those masks in action there. And those are the masks that we want to um, bake out and bring into Substance Painter. Because as you can see, if we take this, in fact, let me do let me do this I'm going to put down a color node and connect up that convert height field and then change it to color ramp from an attribute we'll be able to see it a bit better so we've got these really nice um, so we're looking at the debris mask here that the erode node has given us we've got these really really nice masks that we can use to drive our um, our substance paint a layer stack so these are really useful um, the only downside really I suppose is because it's working on points it's actually coloring the point so it tends to get a little bit crunchy um, but you know what that's okay because we can you know we don't need these edges to be super super crisp at this at this level of detail if we wanted more detail in this map we could just up the resolution of our volumes and create a denser height field but again things are going to start to take longer to process and what i've found from my experiments in putting this together is even a 512 map a 512 pixel by 512 pixel actually gives you the results that you need uh, because you can always blur out this mask in Substance Painter by a few pixels so you're still getting uh, the, the, the sort of the look that you want. So that's our debris map which would be very difficult to recreate in Substance Painter. Um, then we've got a high frequency curvature 
which again would be super, super difficult to, to generate in, in Substance Painter. Even though the curvature maps we've been using have been, you know, they've been good and functional, they're nowhere near as detailed as this. So this might be something that we want to use and process further in Substance Painter. Um, what else have we got? We've got a water mask, uh, which I used in my version of it just to give us um, some sort of standing water in in these areas just to sort of mix it up a little bit uh, but again another really difficult mask to to reproduce within within substance painter so that's the goal then is to transfer all these attributes and that's all they are at the moment they're just point attributes that live on that live on the geometry we need to find a way to bake all this information out onto texture maps okay so the way that we can do that <laughs> and as i mentioned before it's uh, it's really fiddly so please uh, take notes and and keep up um what we're going to do first things first we're going to get the node that we need set up and we're going to go back up to object level and we're going to go to our out context here where all the rendering takes place and i'm just going to drop down a bake texture rop okay so bake texture rop. All right. So if we put one of those things down, what this is this is going to do exactly what we want. It's going to take information from one thing and then bake it down onto another thing. Okay. So we've got some controls that you should be familiar with. We can render. We can set the resolution. You can see it's already set up. It's already configured to use UDIM uh, coordinates, which is great. And then we've got this huge bunch of things that we can bake out so if we just want to bake out the occlusion map or the cavity map or the base color we can do that we can bake it out that way um, but in addition to that we can add extra image planes okay and this is what we're going to do we're going to reference these point attributes as extra image planes okay so we're going to specify those masks as extra image planes that need to be baked and this is the node that's going to do the baking for us. All right. But before we get to that, there's a couple of videos left. I told you it's going to be fiddly. So in the next video, we'll take a look at how we can set up a material that will respond to uh, this baking node because the high polygon object has to have some, uh, we have to flag these attributes to be exported all right so we will do that in the next video thanks